Ah, the good old dongle deck. You know, these things are so convenient, they're so small, they take up hardly any space whatsoever. All they require is a USB cable. But you know, sometimes, well, these are great for IEMs, earphones, uh, a lot of headphones these work fine with, but sometimes you need a bit more power. You also might want a bit more versatility if you're running speakers and whatnot. So in that case, you might want something a bit more like this. And this is the Yulong DA Art Aurora DAC preamp and headphone amplifier. Let's get it. What's cracking audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. So this is the Aurora and look, I'll tell you right up front, there are some things I absolutely love about this thing. There are other things that I am not so happy about. So if you want to learn what those things are, then stick around. By the way, if you are a fan of audio related content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to show your support for the channel, I have a Patreon set up. There is a link down in the description below, so check that out. But let's talk about the Aurora here. First of all, the price is $520. Now, I've actually already seen this at $460 something during a sale. I think that sale is on Shenzhen Audio. Uh, it's probably over by the time you see this video, but uh, yeah, these things you can often pick them up at a lower price if you wait shop during those sales shop smart but uh you know if you can't wait just go out and grab one because yeah <laughs> so 520 dollars it has a saber ess 9068 as dac chip in it which is one of the brand new chips from saber uh, it's got a signal to noise ratio of 125 decibels and of course it supports all those file size uh, sample rates up to 32 bit 384 kilohertz DSD 512 it also does MQA decoding so pretty standard in terms of what it does but uh, let's let's walk around let's walk you through the physical build up first of all it weighs about 1 kilogram and here's the front panel so it's very simple you've got a selection switch on the front here that selects through your various inputs you've got usb coaxial optical bluetooth and line now that bluetooth this is one of the little niggles that i don't like about this thing the bluetooth uh variant is really only available in china at the moment as far as i know it's because of legal issues and uh technicalities like that but so they've disabled the bluetooth on this unit but you still got that Bluetooth there. So when you're selecting through your various inputs here, that Bluetooth, is, you're just going to have to skip over it every time. That's a little thing that bugs me. I know it's minor, but hey. Then secondly, you've got this knurled volume knob. It feels very nice. It's all metal, of course, aluminium chassis as well. And it's nicely damped. So it's got a good amount of resistance to it. It's very nice for making precise adjustments, volume adjustments. And then we've got a 4.4 millimeter balanced headphone output, 6.35 millimeter single ended output and a balanced XLR output. So you're pretty covered for every IEM and headphone that you got. You might need an adapter occasionally if you're using a 2.5 mil. But uh, yeah, that's very handy. And let's have a look at the back now. So first of all, we've got a DAC and preamp switch. Now, most of you probably know what that means, but when it's set to preamp, that means you can adjust the volume with the volume knob. When it is in DAC mode, it's a fixed level line output, so you cannot adjust the volume. Now right here, obviously, we've got our balanced XLR outputs and RCA output, and then you've got a RCA line in, coaxial, optical, and USB input. Now, for the most part, I just use the USB input because I was connected to my computer. Here is the power switch, and here, obviously, is the power socket now. I, I have another little niggle, another gripe with the positioning of the power switch here. When the power plug is plugged in 
And when you have a USB cable plugged in, as you can see, my finger is wider than the space between those, so it can be a little bit tricky to get in there and turn the power on and off. I wish they'd just put it on the front, because I think these switches look pretty sweet anyway, and it would just be so much more convenient. Now while I'm talking about my gripes, I might as well cover the last one here, and that is that the unit gets very hot. And that is not unique to this device, it's quite common for DACs and amps, and uh, primarily the reason being for this model is because the headphone output and the preamp output are class A. And in case you're not aware, class A is what most audiophiles or enthusiasts prefer over class D, although the, the difference between them has narrowed in recent times. But I'm not going to get into that. If you, if you There are plenty of resources online if you want to learn more about class A and class D. But this is a class A headphone out and preamp and in my opinion that is a great thing but the downside is this unit gets very hot now for some reason there are no vents anywhere and I've seen this before this is the same the same situation with my Burson Funk amp if someone is watching anyone watching is more knowledgeable than I am about the uh, physics of these things can you tell me why? Is there any reason not to put some vents even on the bottom or on the back or the sides just to let some of that hot air out? Leave a comment below and enlighten me if you can. Now, um, so yeah, I am a person who basically I leave my computer on 24-7 and I will often sort of just get up out of my chair and walk out of the room and I might not come back for a couple of hours. and when I do that, I often forget to turn off a DAC or amp that I've been using. And when I do that and come back two or three hours later with the with the Aurora here, like the whole corner of the room where this amp is situated, it just radiates heat. You can feel it as soon as you walk in the door. It gets really hot. Um, but like I said, it's common. It's so common with these things. Don't think about it too much as... A con it is just something that you should consider now let's talk about the output power of the head amp here for a second so in from the single ended output you're looking at about 1600 milliwatts for, uh, at 32 ohms from the 6.35 jack here from both of the balanced outputs however you are looking at around 4000 milliwatts so this little amp headphone amp can happily power just about any headphone out there there are only a few outliers that might require something with more juice than that but for the most part you can plug any headphone into this and it'll do great and as far as IEMs go I've had absolutely no issues using this amp but with a very very sensitive set of IEMs I can hear a little bit of background noise but only if my fan is off and my air conditioner is off and only if I'm not sitting right next to my computer but it's really not an issue this headphone amp sounds fantastic with things like the FIR Audio 5X5 here or the Wrapped Go Hook X Planar Magnetic here no problems whatsoever as long as you're Unless you are really listening to it in a completely silent environment, you won't hear that noise floor. So there is absolutely loads of output power. Plug it into anything. Or, of course, you can send the signal out to some powered speakers or a power amplifier for that matter. But, you know, I don't like to get too deep into all that technical talk. So we're going to move on right now. And let's talk about how this guy actually sounds. So... The Yulong Aurora here inherits many of the sonic characteristics of the Yulong Canary 2, which I reviewed some time ago. It's kind of defined by its muscular, authoritative tonality, paired with a very clean and spacious presentation. However, with the added balanced analog section, the Class A output, this device is a clear step up from its smaller sibling, the Canary 2. So as I said, I had this hooked up to my PC via USB and fed it a variety of music, 
including, of course, high-res FLAC files, and I also did some streaming with Spotify Premium. The first order of business was to test the headphone output, since that is what gets used most commonly on my desktop. And look, this is just an absolutely lovely sounding amplifier or DAC, whatever you want to call it. And that is the reason why I highly recommend it, even though it's not perfect. And there are those things I mentioned that I do not like about it. But the sound is incredible. As I said, muscular, robust, strong sound. Very clean, very clear, but it does have that kind of class A warmth to it, that organicness. Bass notes sound nice and punchy and very clean and controlled. The mid-range is lovely. It's lush, perhaps slightly a bit forward in the mid-range, which is, of course, a good thing. The mid-range on this device is it's just magical. It's very emotive. It's really engaging. The spacing between elements or instruments is excellent. The soundstage this thing does is, is really lovely as well. Nice, wide soundstage. And in terms of treble, this little guy does a great job there too. It's got good top end extension. I would say it's just a, a little bit of class A warmth comes through to the treble. But by that, it when I say that, it doesn't uh, mask any details whatsoever. It's still a very detailed amp. I would say it's it sounds very uncolored, but there's just... Uh, if, you, if you're familiar with the difference between Class A and Class D, you'll know what I'm talking about. It just has that sort of character to it, that very um, organic naturalness to it. But there is not a whole lot more left for me to say about this device. Look, it gets very hot. There's no Bluetooth available, most likely, in your country, unless you are in China. But great selection or great variety of headphone outputs on the front plenty of inputs and outputs on the back it's got this beautiful damped volume knob it's very well constructed and it just works it, it pairs well with it paired well with pretty much everything i tried with it which is a little bit unusual you know often you'll have certain configurations or certain pair ups that have better synergy than others but this thing just seems to sound good with anything that you plug into it so it is a bit expensive but i mean look at the size of it i can hold it in one hand so it takes up very little space on your desktop but really the biggest selling point of this device is how good it sounds and i'm going to leave it right there so guys that is the yulong da art aurora dac pre amp and headphone amplifier i think this is brilliant and i will definitely be getting plenty of use out of this in the future so guys thanks for watching the video if you liked it give it a thumbs up parfam audio file style if you're new to the channel want to see more content like this make sure you hit that subscribe button and until next time i'll see you later